what is what is your definition of reincarnation? So I don't think that we incarnate as other things other than um, sentient beings. I will say that a lot of us incarnate in different timelines and different dimensions and um, and even in very different uh, types of forms where we might not have a dense vehicle body at all. It might be mostly light or space or sound. Well, okay. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that's, that's a, that's a solid answer. Um, yeah. And I, and I love that. I love the idea of different dimensions. I've never really considered that as well. I, again, I've, I've really only thought of it in that very basic um, mm-hmm. just kind of, like you, it's just like you're just always like the idea of just like this is never stopping. Like you, you, I'll at least have this like conscious feeling of being alive forever, just through different people, which is like oddly comforting to me. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't. Um, do some people just stop existing? Does that happen at all? Well, you don't. You don't stop existing. I mean, energy is not created or destroyed. So So it's, you know, you might choose not to incarnate. So your consciousness might then, you know, if if you're not, if you're not putting your consciousness in a vehicle, then your consciousness sort of just becomes part of the larger picture. You know, it's like, I think of it, how I see it is like, like these beautiful, like sparkly, like, like beings that make up our consciousness. And then when we decide to put it in a vehicle, then they all work together to create like a knowing of that experience. But if we decide that we're not going to put it in a vehicle, then they're all kind of just free to like roam around the cosmic ethers collecting what they sure. can, you know? <laughs> and, and that's something that you believe we, we a hundred percent have a choice in doing. So everything yeah. w- we are consciously making every decision about whatever happens to us once we're no longer alive. Yes. Yeah. So in between, uh, incarnate incarnations. So in between like the vehicles, like we are completely in control of what we do, like whether or not we go into another vehicle, whether or not we explore the ethers, that is a, that's a choice that we make. Yeah. I the, the only other thing that I'm I'm I mean I'm interested in a lot of things but something that I do I did want to dig a little bit deeper into and obviously whatever you're comfortable with talking about is these past lives that you've had I mean mm-hmm. do you talk about them are you open with with yeah. discussing them I, I I would just love to hear about them like what other past lives do you remember Yeah so um, in one of my other lives like I mentioned I'm an herbal healer and it's someplace. Um, like I would say like someplace in Great Britain or the UK is, is my best approximation based on the herbs. Um, I am a monk in another life, which is actually one of my favorite lives. I go there a lot. It's very, it's very soothing for me. Sounds very relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so that's one of them. I have a lot of lives where I'm actually not in a physical form. So a lot of my lives are actually um, on other planets or in other places. So I work a lot with the Hathors and the Pleiadians, um, which are two groups of aliens, if you will, though they don't prefer that term. Um, and I definitely have lives there. Um, okay, hold on one second. <laughs> the, the, the two names that you just said, these are other quote unquote alien beings that you right. uh, from lives what were the names again uh the pleiadians okay is the first one and the hathors okay and you, the, the, uh, okay that's <laughs> that's wonderful i love that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um please continue yeah so i mean so that's why you know i have a lot of my lives are they're they're kind of homogenous you know like if if I'm in a physical form, normally I would say I have red hair, which is interesting. Like I've been a man as much as I've been a woman. So, but I, I would say like most of most of my my lives, um, when I'm in a when it, when I'm in a human form, you know, on this earth, are in some way, shape, or form in service. So, you know, whether it's um, like I'm a temple keeper in one of them. Um, I'm an herbal healer. I'm an energy healer in another one. Really quick, too. These these al- I, and, I, and, and you, they don't prefer, prefer the term aliens. You mm-hmm. said right. What what would be a, a a better term? 
So I call them travelers. That's like the okay. closest approximation that I've been able to come up with in English is the travelers. And so you're you're a monk, you're a teacher, you're an herbalist. What are you doing in this traveler world? Like what is going on there? Uh, a type of uh, it's like I, I teach essentially like a form of geometry. Okay. But it's based uh, on energetics. So it doesn't sure. okay. It doesn't translate perfectly. Yeah. This. No, and, and, and that's totally fine. I'm not looking to understand any of this. I just want to hear about it. <laughs> that's all yeah. I care about. <laughs> Interesting. And and so you do you have like a family in this? Is it just you? Like what kind of life do you do you live? So I would you know, the the structures are very different. I mean, every almost everybody is your family in a sense. I mean, I, we communicate telepathically, so you know, the the communication no is instantaneous. Yeah. There's you know, so you know what people are feeling, you know what they need. It's a completely, you know, we think of like the family unit here, but in a lot of other lives, a lot of other forms, the family unit is much bigger. It's really not about the family. It's about the entire community. Full episodes of Obsessed with Death are available on Apple Podcasting, Spotify Podcasting, and wherever you get your podcasts. The full episode will be released in the next few days. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe, and join us on Obsessed with Death.